I'm Dingo Cannon, and this is Standing Ground. Now, for this show, I was going to do it on the number 528. What's 528? It's a hertz level frequency that has been left out of the world's tuning system deliberately. And I researched this extensively, and it's an amazing conspiracy that I think the whole world should know and be aware of. But something happened on the way. I just couldn't let the Michael Jackson case go. The Leaving Neverland, just for me, isn't finished. And now that HBO have announced they're going to carry on with the documentary and show it around the world. So I thought, something just can't let this go. So I had to investigate further. And we've heard a lot from Corey Fieldman and other young white people. But where was Michael Jackson's black friends? I mean, that sounds funny to say where was his black friends, but Michael Jackson was an icon, and an icon that should have had also adult friends, and I'm sure he did, but what about people that wanted nothing from him? Some people that he could have trusted, and I'm sure there probably wasn't even that many, but one that I found, and one that I've actually been following for a long time, his name's Dick Gregory, and the more I investigated, the more I realized Dick Gregory has a lot to play in the Michael Jackson life. So here it goes. Let's go right now. We're going to investigate Dick Gregory and the Michael Jackson connection. He didn't have a childhood. But Michael Jackson, a child, became one of the most powerful human beings in the world. And they killed him. And when they killed him, he was getting ready to do the big shows in London 50 times. And God himself couldn't work one city 50 times. So how did they think Michael Jackson was going to work those shows? And the child in him? It never dawned on him that he couldn't do it. The words from Dick Gregory. But first, who was Dick Gregory? In brief, Dick Gregory is a legend. I love this guy and I love listening to him. So who actually was Dick Gregory? Dick Gregory was born Richard Clarkson Gregory in 1932 in Missouri. American comedian, civil activist, social critic, writer, conspiracy theorist, and was the first black comedian to successfully cross over to white audiences. A political activist, in the 1960s he protested against the Vietnam War and went on a hunger strike in protest. And one of Michael's closest, closest friends, who didn't need anything from him. Gregory first met Michael on the set of the Wiz movie in 1979 and Michael got sick just at the start of filming it and this was going to be the biggest musical all black cast ever created and it, was, it would have made Michael a legend and it did but he got sick on the set and Gregory was called in because he's also known as a health guru and he met with Michael and he said Michael they're gonna they're gonna knock you off this this cast they're gonna replace you within 18 hours so I've got to get you ready and back on the set before 18 hours so he put a formula together that he said, and 12 hours later he had Michael back on the set. When I say a formula, I'm thinking he's meaning a green juice or he's drinking a green smoothie because Gregory's always drinking green smoothies every time he does interviews. He's also a vegan. In the words of Gregory himself, I was amazed how brilliant he was with a child mind. Now for me, this is just more testament about a guy that was close to him and really it shows you more how Michael really thought in his psyche. He actually was a childlike thinking. Now, in 2005, the child molesting charges on Michael Jackson that went to court. And near the last days, Greg Gregory was caught in once again by the family. And Joe Jackson wanted him to come into the courtroom and sit on Joe's chair for the court case and, and be with Michael. And interesting fact that um, Gregory actually fasted for 40 days to focus on the truth of this trial. I mean, he was so connected to the universe and he dropped so many truth bombs that we're going to show you here as well. Um, we're going to land it down the track and talk about Dick Gregory and, and what, what he believed about fasting and about the connection with the universe. It's amazing, but he doesn't come across like he's a spiritual guru at all. He just comes across as this, well, later on he is an angry man, but with, but, he, but, he, but he's, his funny, he's the funniest cat you'll ever meet. But anyway, let's get back to this. So he took Joe's chair and on the last day of the trial, Michael Jackson was acquitted from all molestation charges and he drove in the car back to back to the house with Michael. And he got upstairs and Michael called him to go up and up to the top floor. And as Gregory came into the room, he just grabbed Gregory so hard and he, he recalls that he just squeezed him and he says like a wild animal that he just couldn't let him go and he whispered into into his ear and he said, They're gonna kill me. He goes, They're gonna kill me. And Michael looked so frail and he was so pale. And he said to he said to Michael, he goes, When's the last time you eat? He goes, I can't eat the food, they're going to poison me. And he said, when's the last time you drink? And he goes, Gregory, I can't drink. They're going to poison me. They're trying to kill me. And Gregory goes, we've got to get you to the hospital. He goes, I can't go to the hospital. They'll kill me in the hospital. And he goes, Michael, I'm a lot smarter than you. You just listen to me. I'm going to get you out. 
And that's what he did. He snuck Michael Jackson out. It was in San Francisco. And he goes, we're going to get to the hospital and we're not going to announce you're coming. We're just going to turn up and then they're going to have to deal with you in the emergency room. And that's what they did. And they took him straight into the emergency room and they put a drip straight on Michael. And at 5.30 that night, they got him to the hospital and they got him on that drip. And at 6 o'clock in the morning, they had still had the drip on and Gregory stayed with him in the hospital. And the doctor came over to him and he said, if you didn't get him here within 12 hours, he would have been dead. I mean, that's the sort of person that Gregory was. He knew Michael more than anyone else. And I'll say it again, that really he didn't want anything from Michael at all. To me, he was a true, true friend that knew Michael and was really the confidant to the Jackson family. So let's take it back to the This Is It concert. Lords of London insured Michael for 1.5 billion, not million, billion dollars for that show. Here's the interesting thing. A lot of people are saying that, yeah, Michael Jackson was a, a drug abuser and a drug user and that he was taking drugs regularly, like syringe type drugs. And that, so Lords of London shot him for that amount of money, but they never saw any traces of needle marks on his arms or his body or between his toes. I mean, for that sort of money, that's an extensive body health check. And you can be rest assured, with Michael Jackson's life, everything came out of the woodworks. Everything came out of the closets. So you can imagine if they found traces of syringes and, and drug abuse on his body, that that would have came out in the papers. So it raises the point was, is that a lie? Was Michael using drugs or not? Because what I'm about to say next is the biggest bomb you'll ever hear and it came from Dick Gregory himself. And here it is. Michael was killed by a laser. By a laser. He said it shot through the house. He said he died at 2 p.m. But the call came into the ambulance at 10 p.m. And he'd been dead already for over eight hours. And a bloody woman's blouse that still had the tag on it was found in Michael's room. And they think that it was used to mop up blood from Michael. So what actually happened in there? And here's the crazy thing. That blouse with blood on it was never used in evidence. And they left it out of the whole trial. And I bet you didn't even know that. There it is. As I investigate more and go deeper, deeper into this investigation and the Michael Jackson documents, and we go down further and further in this rabbit hole, and we go down to Wonderland, the truth just might set you free. But what is the truth? There are so many conflicting stories about what happened to Michael, but we're going to piece it here all together. We're going to keep an open mind. And I think if we get this piece and that piece and we put them together and we continue searching, and I'm not going to stop searching until we find the truth. And I want you to come on this journey with me. And I am going to be open-minded. I'm not going to say, hey, this is what happens. Michael Jackson is alive. Michael Jackson died by a laser. This or that. I'm going to take all this on board be subjective, and I'm going to join the dots, like David Icke says. The Michael Jackson, Dick Gregory connection goes a lot deeper, and we're going to investigate a lot more. I'm Dingo Cannon, and this is Standing Ground. And if you like anything you see here, and you want me to keep going, because I really want to keep going, um, please hit the subscribe button. That would be really, really cool, and that would help us a lot. Michael Jackson, Dick Gregory, and many more. Leave Neverland has got a date set for the world, March 6 and 8, 2019. So that's coming out. We're going to look at that. It still might not come out. They still might block it, but who knows? But when it comes out, rest assured, the standing ground, we're going to get a hold of it, and we're going to really look at it and keep an open mind. And remember, the future is an idea. Imagine it.